We welcome all of you to our service this morning. Glad you could make it. We know we can't be together in body, but we're going to be together in spirit. We'll continue this this week, and again, at least next week, we'll do the same thing. Today, let's start right now with a moment of prayer. Father, we come to you at this time. Our hearts are all mixed up. There's so much chaos, so much indecision, so much anxiety in the world. We just ask you now to calm our fears. Let us feel your presence, feel your love, and know that you are here with us and will get us through every situation that comes our way. Be with us in this service today that your spirit may fill ours and we may know that we are loved. Amen. Let's sing Blessed Assurance. Two verses. She had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet listening to what he said. But Martha was distracted by all the preparations that had to be made. She came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. Martha, Martha, the Lord answered, you're worried and you're upset about many things, but only one thing is needed. Mary has chosen what is better and it will not be taken away from her. This is the word of the Lord for the people of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today's passage is a very familiar one to all of us. In fact, it's one that I preached on last summer. But I think with today's circumstances, we need to look at this passage again. We find that Jesus has begun his faithful journey to Jerusalem and to his death. And in verse 38 that I just read, it says he came to a village where a woman named Martha opened her home to him. Now, what does open her home? And does that mean that she went out and invited him to come in? Does that mean that he already knew her and he said, I'm coming through town. May I come in and stay with you? We don't know. We don't know if he already knew Martha. We know at one time he was close friends, but was that later? We don't know. But we know that when he was there, Martha was trying to impress. She was going around in circles, everything she could, trying to get everything just right to make the perfect meal for her perfect guest. You know, I think almost every woman in our congregation can understand that. When it's your house, you're the hostess, 
You want to do everything that you can to make sure that it's all perfect. Your reputation's on the line. I mean, how do you want people to say, oh, she had a messy house, or it took hours before that food was finally ready? That's not what we want to hear. And you know, as a church, we have a special guest. What do we do? Our church hostess team springs into action. They get the food and the meal going right away. We have a revival preacher or the DS or a, a homecoming event. We want the food to be plentiful. We want it to look good. We want it to be warm. We want to make a good impression. We want to look good in front of our guests. And you see, that's what was happening to Martha. She was more concerned with how she looked than with what was needed by Jesus at the moment. She was scurrying around trying to get everything ready. And the faster she went, the harder it got. The more she was, why won't Mary come in and help me? She's my sister. She needs to be here. She needs to be helping me. But what was Mary doing? Was she, you know, even heating the water? Was she baking the bread? Was she refilling glasses? No, she was just out there in the living room sitting at the feet of Jesus, listening to what he was saying. You see, Mary understood that there are times that we need to just stop and listen to Jesus. He was on his journey to Jerusalem. He was headed to his death. He knew what lay ahead of him, and he knew that he was going to be alone and abandoned by his disciples. And right now, he just needed somebody to listen to him, and Mary chose that. Mary was spending her time not trying to do something for Jesus, but spending time with him. And you see, as a church, there's a time when we're supposed to be doing something for God. But there's also a time when we're supposed to stop and just be in his presence. As a church, we're in the middle of Lent. That's the time of year when we prepare ourselves for Easter. As preachers, we remind you that you've got 40 days to get your spiritual act together, to prepare your hearts to receive Christ anew this Easter day. But as preachers, we also know that a lot of times that doesn't happen. We are so busy. We have so many other things that we're doing that we don't take the time. You know, sometimes Lent is just a signal for us to get everything crammed in before Easter morning. We've got, we've got work expectations. We've got children's homework. We've got gardens to plant. We've got rec club, rec team practice. We've got ball games. We've got church activities. We've got Easter egg hunts. Everything going on. So many activities. So many social events. But this year it's all different. This year, because of the ban on many of our social events, we have the time to spend getting closer to God. We can use that time to focus on God and sit at his feet as Mary did. And we can listen to his voice. For once, we can finally spend those 40 days preparing our hearts and minds for Easter. The Lenten season should be a time for us to prepare to recharge our spiritual batteries. But it should also be a time for us to be fully committed to God, to know that spending time with Him is one of the most important things that we do, that we spend time with Him because we want Him to know just how important He is in our life. Today, this Lenten season, take time. Make the time. Turn off the 24-hour news service. Stop spending time each day catching up on the latest virus numbers. Stop listening to the dire predictions of what might possibly happen. Stop listening to every agency blame the other one for slow response to our needs and our situations. Stop focusing on all the problems that are associated with this pandemic. Stop being pulled into all the negative forecasts. Forget about all the what ifs. Instead, make a conscious effort to spend time focused on God. Take the time to sit at his feet as Mary did. Tell him about all your worries, your anxieties, and then trust him to deal with them. Peter reminds us in 1 Peter 5, 7 to cast all our anxieties on him for he cares for us. Trust him to deal with all your fear, to remove your anxiety, to quiet your minds, and allow you to focus on him. 
through the years, we lose some of that enthusiasm and that bubbling excitement we have when we first came to know Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord during this Lenten season. Amid all the troubling reports that we hear, make the time to renew that relationship with God. Know Him again as your Savior and Lord. Let your eyes sparkle with excitement as you rekindle your love for Him. Today, let's love Him and trust Him. Amen. Uh, we will sing two verses of Take Time to Be Holy. Amen. Yeah.